the word of God shows that a man or a woman gives to others from that which he or she has or possesses. No one could give of that which he or she does not have or possesses. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, Paul reminds his readers that God comforted them so they could comfort others. Now, who needs to be comforted, encouraged, or consoled? Before answering such a question, we should always keep in mind that the Word of God shows that God does not exempt people of faith or Jesus followers from experiencing sorrow, sadness, affliction, suffering, or agony. But He promised to comfort, to console, to encourage, or to alleviate them from their sorrows, and to empower them to comfort, to encourage, or to console others. If we reflect about it, we're going to conclude that every person needs at some point in his or her life to be comforted, encouraged, or consoled in every person, male or female, young or old. Everyone needs it. For example, a child needs to be consoled because he or she's going to school for the first time. A father or mother needs to be consoled because he or she has lost his or her son due to a terrible illness or to an accident. A woman who was abandoned by her husband or a husband who was abandoned by his wife needs to be consoled, needs to be comforted. So people who suffer illnesses or who get injured, battered, betrayed, abused or troubled need to be comforted, encouraged, stimulated to keep on living to keep on going. That is, every person needs God's soothing or reassuring grace or favor towards him or her. I'm going to say this again. Every person, every man and every woman needs God's soothing or reassuring grace or favor towards him or her so he or she could keep on going. This is what The New King James Version says, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partakers, of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. Now, this is a New Living Translation of the same passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with His comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident 
that all of you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. As we consider the portion which I just have read from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I should say this, that in 2 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians is a letter which is characterized for being a personal, a personal letter from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul reveals a lot about his person, about his trials, about his adversities, about his ministry, about his adversaries, and about his spiritual experiences through his missionary trips. In the first half of 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, you'll notice how Paul, after greeting his readers, praises God, the Father, and testifies of how he had delivered him from death while traveling in the province of Asia. In, second, in the second half of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul appeals to God's faithfulness to fulfill all his promises in Jesus while attempting to explain why he did not visit the Corinthians as he had promised them to do so. Now, what truth does the Apostle Paul teach in this section of his letter? First, Paul teaches about the reality of tribulations, difficulties, adversities, or tough times of this present time or of this side of eternity. I'm going to say this again. Paul teaches about the reality of tribulations, difficulties, adversities, or tough times on this side of eternity. Jesus' followers face these not because of their lack of faith or because they're spiritually immature, but because they're part of life on this side of eternity. That is, God allows Jesus' followers to face tribulations, difficulties, adversities, tough times, and even persecution for their faith. Second, Paul teaches that there are afflictions which are characteristics of those who live under Christ Jesus' lordship or authority. I'm going to say this again. Paul teaches that there are afflictions which are characteristics or peculiar to those who live under Jesus' authority or lordship. Sometimes Christ Jesus' followers suffer because of the hostile attitude of those with whom they share their faith or their testimony. Some of Christ Jesus' followers suffer because of the hostile attitude of those with whom they live or work side by side. Likewise, Christ Jesus' followers suffer because they are rejected by those with whom they share their faith or their testimony. Third, Paul reminds his readers that Jesus' followers, regardless of their cultural background, or ethnic origin share in the tribulations, difficulties, adversities, or tough times, which are characteristics of this present time or of this side of eternity. They're fellow pilgrims. They face them regardless where they live. Fourth, Paul teaches that God comfort Christ Jesus' followers who have suffered so they could comfort others who are suffering. Paul teaches that God comfort Christ Jesus' followers who have suffered so they could comfort others who are suffering. Therefore, thank God for comforting you in the instances in which you needed His comfort. Praise Him for it. Thank Him. Bless Him. Keep always in mind that God has strengthened your inner being, your soul, so you could overcome all the adversities, sufferings, or tribulations which you face on this side of eternity. So, minister to others through the experiences which God has allowed you to go through. I'm going to say this again to end this. Minister to others through the experiences which He has allowed you to go through so you can be a blessing to them. Amen.
God bless you.